Hello, my fellow unicorns. Today, I'm going to read another story from the Random House Book of Fairy Tales. Today's story is going to be Sleeping Beauty in the Wood. The Sleeping Beauty in the Wood by Charles Perrault In a distant land, there lived a king and a queen who could have no children. Nothing else would give them pleasure, and they moved through their days as if they were in mourning. But after many, many years, the queen at last bore a daughter. Her christening was to be magnificent. For the child's godmothers, seven fairies were chosen. Each was to give her a gift, a talent or virtue that would make of the child perfection itself. After the christening, the company returned to the palace, where a great feast had been prepared to honor the seven fairies. Before each one was a golden plate with a knife and fork and spoon set with diamonds and rubies. But just as they were sitting down to eat, a very old fairy came into the hall. She had not been invited because she had shut herself in a high, distant tower for many years, and it was thought that she was dead. The king ordered a place laid for the old fairy, but he could not give her a golden plate with a knife and fork and spoon as the others had, for only seven have been made. The old fairy was outraged and muttered threats beneath her breath. A young fairy who sat nearby heard her, Fearing that the uninvited one might harm the little princess, she hid herself behind the curtains. She wanted to give the last gift of all, and in this way perhaps undo any evil that the old fairy was planning. Soon, it was time to give the gifts to the princess. The youngest fairy said, she would grow up to be beautiful. The next, that she would have the wit of an angel. The third promised her grace. The fourth gave her the gift of dancing. The fifth, the gift of singing. And the last fairy said she would be able to play sweet music on any instrument she took up. Now it was the old fairy's turn. She came near to the cradle, her head shaking with rage and spite. The young princess's beauty and accomplishments will not help her, she announced. But one day, she will prick her hand on a tiny spindle, and when this happens, she will die. The terrible gift made all the company tremble and weep, and the queen could not be comforted. But at this instant, 
a young fairy who had came from behind the curtains and cried out, No, my king and queen, your child will not die of this wound. It is true, I have not the power to change the older fairy's gift. The princess will indeed pierce her finger with a spindle, but instead of dying, she will only fall into a deep sleep. It will last a hundred years, and at the end of it, a king's son will come and awaken her. The young, the young fairy's words were of scant comfort to avoid the misfortune that had been foretold for his daughter. The king ordered all the spindles in the kingdom to be destroyed. Anyone even found spinning was to be put to death. Fifteen or sixteen years afterward, the king and queen were running, were away in the countryside, and the young princess was running about in the palace. She went from room to room, and came at last into a little garret on top of the tower, where an old woman was spinning with her spindle. The old woman had never heard of the king's orders, and so had gone on making her thread in the way of her mother and grandmother before her. "'What are you doing, my good woman?' asked the princess. "'I am spinning, pretty child,' said the old woman, for she did not know who the princess was. "'How clever!' said the princess. "'How do you do it? Give it to me so I can try.' Either because she was careless or because the old fairy had ordained it. No sooner had the girl taken the spindle than it pierced her hand, and she fell down in a swoon. The good old woman cried out for help. Servants and courtiers and ladies came running from every room in the palace. They threw water upon the princess's face. They unlaced her and struck her on the palms of her hands, and rubbed her temples with cologne. But it was no use. Nothing would awaken her. Then the king, who had returned from the countryside, saw that the old fairy's cruel gift had come to pass, and his daughter must sleep for a hundred years. By his order, she was carried into the finest room in the palace, and laid upon a bed, embroidered with silver and gold. The color in her face was undimmed, and she was as beautiful as ever. It is true that her eyes were shut, but those who listened closely could hear her breathe, so they knew she was not dead. The young fairy who had saved the princess's life was far away in the kingdom of Matakin, but a dwarf in seven league boots came there to give her the news. At once the fairy left for the palace in a fiery chariot drawn by dragons. The king greeted her gently and showed her the room where the princess slept. Though the fairy saw that she was well provided for, she thought how sad the princess would be when she woke up alone in that great palace with the people she knew dead and gone. So she touched everyone with her magic ring. She touched the housekeepers, the maids-in-waiting, the courtiers, the cooks, the scullions, and the footmen. Then she went into the stable and touched the horses and the stable boys. She even touched Puff, the princess's little dog who was curled up on the bed beside her. At once, they all fell fast asleep and would not wake until the princess woke. Everything in the palace was motionless. The spits on the fire with their partridge meats and pheasants stopped turning, and the flames died down and slept. King and queen watched the fairy in silence. 
when she was done, they kissed their beloved daughter goodbye and left the palace forever. Within the quarter of an hour, a great number of trees interlaced with brambles and thorns grew up around the park and formed a hedge so thick that neither man nor beast could penetrate it, and so tall that only the tallest turrets of the palace could be seen. In this way, the fairy made a magical safe place where the princess could sleep in peace. At the end of a hundred years, the son of a king who lived nearby went hunting in the countryside. He asked the people about the turrets he saw in the woods and why the hedge grew so thickly there. Each told him a different story. Some said it was a place full of ghosts. Others said the witches went there to hold their Sabbath meetings. Still. Others said it was the home of an ogre who caught children and ate them alive. The prince did not know what to believe. Then a very old man said to him, Please, your highness, more than fifty years past, I heard my father say there was a one time in this castle a princess, the most beautiful ever seen. Because she was bewitched, she must sleep for a hundred years, and could be awakened only by a prince. Never had the king's son heard of such a marvelous adventure. Fired by love and the desire for glory, he resolved at once to gain entry to the palace. He prepared to cut down the hedge with his sword, but as soon as he came, there all the great trees the bushes, and the brambles parted to let him pass through. He came out upon a broad avenue at the end of it was the palace. But when he looked behind to see if his servants were still with him, he discovered that the hedge had closed again and he was all alone. However, this did not deter him, for he was a young prince in search of love and glory. Quickly, he walked into the palace courtyard, but what he saw made him stop in amazement. A frightful silence hung over the pa palace, and the image of death was everywhere. A score of men were outstretched upon the paving stones, their limbs at grotesque angles. But when the but then the prince saw, beside the porters, goblets still filled with wine. He leaned down next to them and felt the movement of their chests, and then he knew they were alive and he had fallen asleep while drinking their wine. Next he crossed a court paved with marble and came into a guardroom. Guards were standing in their ranks with their muskets on their shoulders and snoring with all their might. He went upstairs and through several rooms filled with people, men, and women both. Some were standing and others were sitting, but all were sleeping soundly. Finally, he entered a gilded chamber where he saw upon a bed embroidered with gold and silver, a girl of fifteen or sixteen years. Her coral lips were parted slightly, and her beauty was so luminous that she seemed almost to shine. The prince approached her, trembling, and fell upon his knees. Then, as the end of the enchantment had come, the prince was awoke. She gazed at the son's, king's son tenderly, as if she already knew him. Is it you, my prince? she said at last. You have waited a long time. The prince was thrilled by her words and told her that he loved her better than he did himself. They spoke for many hours, and though their conversation made little sense, it hardly mattered. The princess laughed merrily 
and nodded at the prince's remarks. It was almost as if she had imagined the moment of her awakening many times over and knew what he would say. Perhaps the good fairy, during so long a sleep, had given her very pleasant dreams. In the meantime, all the palace had woken with the princess. They were naturally concerned with their own needs, and since they were not in love, they were ready to keel over with hunger. The Lady of Honor at last lost patience and told the princess that dinner must be served. At this, the prince helped her from the bed. Her clothing was magnificent, but he took care not to tell her that she was dressed like his grandmother. They went together into the great mirrored hall, where they ate their meal to the old-fashioned melodies of violins and oboes that had been silent for a hundred years. After supper, the chap the chaplain married them in the palace chapel without losing any time. That night they slept little, as the princess was so well rested and they still had so much to say. And in the morning, as dawn was breaking, they traveled to the prince's city where his parents eagerly awaited them. The end. really enjoy Sleeping Beauty. It's one of my favorite fairy tales, and I think it's because when I was young and I watched the original Sleeping Beauty, the animated one by Disney, I used to rewatch that so many times. I absolutely I'm in love with this book and all the stories in it, and I also enjoy the recent adaptation of Maleficent and telling the story of Sleeping Beauty from a different perspective. It's just one of my favorites. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel since I don't advertise on any other social media platforms. I'm going to be reading more stories out of this book and I hope to get through the entire thing. So, thank you so much for watching.